Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet Designs yet again for another tutorial. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on part two of our Easter pouch bag. What? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It's a little bit unorthodox in the way it's been created but you know what? It works. <laughs> And it's not finished guys, we still need to do part three and part three will be the final part of our tutorial and that will be finishing off some rounds up the top and forming some handles. I haven't decided how I want to do the handles yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm going to leave it for another day. But in the meantime, today we are working on two, four, six, eight, ten rounds of the sides of your pouch bag. And then we are working also at the same time ten rounds of the pouch section as well. So um, it's a little tricky, okay? If you are new to crochet, this, this is just not for you. <laughs> <laughs> however however if you want to take a risk just slow it down take your time and take the risk just be weary because even myself as um i don't know what you want to call me a professional crocheter if you will i found myself adding a few extra stitches in these sections here so just be careful i had to take undone Oh, what was it? I think it was the orange and the green because I ended up with 13 or 14. I think I had 14 on one side and 13 on the other when really there should have only been 11 on both sides. So I don't know what I did. I had to take um, four rows undone to fix the problem up. So just be weary that that can happen and it always happens around the corners or around the middle. So just be weary about your stitch count. All right. Now, uh, something I didn't mention in the tutorial, I did put a disclaimer up the top. Down the bottom, right in the corner, right in the middle there, I forgot to mention now was the time to weave in the end that we pulled through there. You won't know what I'm talking about until you start seeing it. So I actually pop up the top a little disclaimer saying, before you continue, weave in all your white ends. And that will just save that hassle of because I ended up doing that little weaving down there right when I was up to my purple. <laughs> and I couldn't get my hands in to weave it in. So just, you know, a heads up there when it comes to weaving in ends. Your best bid is every colour you do, right? Every colour that you do, you weave in the colour before. And that will save the hassle of the 10,000 million ends because you will have a lot of ends for this tutorial. I do apologise in advance for that okay now what did i use for this tutorial quite a bit but before you do have a look let's just have a quick look and see because i didn't get to do this within the tutorial just what it looks like at this stage now remember you're going to have a few more rows uh, that will be the white okay so that's going to fill up a little bit more it'll probably go up about that high a little bit higher so don't stress too much um, but there you go all right so you can fit plenty of eggs i haven't even got any more to put in I think I've got another five or six to put in there but you can fit plenty of eggs in here these are smaller eggs if you have a look they're like palm size so you can fit one or two of your large size eggs in there as well not at the moment because we haven't finished um, but we this is where we're going to get at the end of this tutorial oh, the eggs are falling all over the place all right and as you can see I still haven't weaved in my two pinks on this side and two pinks on that side but everything else has been weaved in all right, let's try three because there's three ends, they're not two. <laughs> now you will need for this tutorial the same hook that we used in the beginning to create the base for part one. You will need your scissors, yes you will. And you'll need, I used two darning needles in this tutorial and you'll see why, only because I needed one to show you uh, where to count and the other one I just use to weave in the ends you don't see me weave in the ends but I do them off air and this one here you need to use at the very beginning just to get through that really tiny tight um, hole there oh by the way you know my board look at the blue it's put blue on my bag and I'm gonna tell you I'm not happy I don't know why I told you that but I did <laughs> there you go you will need a gazillion stitch markers okay we are working on these main two on each section but you will need for this part of the tutorial quite a few stitch markers. So heads up there, all right? You'll work that out when you get to that stage, okay? You will need, these are the five colours that you will need. And I started from, uh, like that. Let's try that. That's how I went. I went, 
Okay, yellow, orange, green, purple, and pink. We're going to close up with some white. Okay, so don't think that's the end of the bag. It's not. This is not finished yet. This is going to be finished on part three. All right, but you will need five of them and you will need 20 grams of each. Now, the reason if you're thinking for two rows, 20 grams, the reason is it's two rows around the bag and two rows inside the bag across um, each pouch. Okay, um, and it's not just two rows, it's two rows with your thread tripled. So you're using three threads at the same time. So it's, it's quite a bit, yeah? It's, it's, you're gonna be needing quite a bit. So just give yourself 20 grams per color. After this, we won't be using the color anymore. Okay, we'll be using only white to finish off the bag. Now to finish off the bag, that'll be tomorrow's tutorial. And that will be raising up the sides a little bit higher so that you're not seeing you know all of this all of that kind of bulky sticking out thing there see how it's kind of sticky outy is that a word i can use sticky outy <laughs> um so what we want to do is close all that up so it's nice and tall plus we want to pop in some handles and again i haven't decided how i'm going to do the handles i wanted to do the handles crisscross where one handle goes one way and another handle crosses through it and goes the other way so keep your eyes peeled I may do that depending on how how much time I have let's not forget that Easter is this week <laughs> at the end of this week and I don't want to be holding anyone up so we will see all right but let's not worry too much about our handles right now let's just get started making the sides and the pouched sections of your Easter bag good luck guys all righty guys where I left you off in part one was slip stitching into this little spot here and the knot was rather noticeable so what we're going to do we are going to firstly fix this knot okay so what I want you to do is grab the little thread and you can really see this it's relatively thick so you can see it and pull it out completely undo your stitch there all right now what you have is you haven't slip stitched it anymore because you've undone it, right? Just grab the loop, pull it through, all right? And so your bag is open currently, okay? Hold it there. All right, now grab your needle, your sewing needle. Just pop your loops through the eye. You might need a real thick needle for this part. I know I used a thinner one in the previous tutorial, but you'll need a thicker one for this one. All right, so this is where you are at the moment. Your stitch is not complete. Okay, so what you're going to do, where you usually slip stitch into, go through the back way, like so, through the whole stitch, like that. Pull your needle through, and it will close your work, like that, completely. All right, what I want you to do is go through the top loop, or the back loop, of your previous stitch like so so you're going to go back into the same space pull that loop through and really give your work a tug and this time you're going to go back into the stitch the whole stitch itself and that's going to be your slip stitched area you can see it a little bit but not as much as you would if you had that big knot before Okay, now what you do is you might want to use a smaller needle for this. I'm going to. You don't have to. If your work is not as thick as mine, then you can use the same needle. But I'm going to use a smaller needle and I'm going to weave these ends in. And it's really important to do this part because this, you'll understand this in a minute, that we're going to be using that later, that section there. So it's going to be visible. Um, I won't be able to explain it properly until we start working but in the meantime just thread each um, one of your threads and weave them in and I'll show you one and then you can weave the rest later and I'll weave the rest on off air in a moment but just grabbing your loop and passing it through any stitch you like let me get a nice close-up so you can see what I'm doing all right so what you're doing is you're passing it through any loop or any stitch you like at the back just one and then you're going to go through another 
And as you can see, I'm going through any stitch I like. There's no, well, there's no special favoritism. <laughs> I'm just going through some stitches and I'm actually splitting the stitch. I'm not just going through the stitches, I'm splitting the thread. Now, because we are working on one strand at a time here, it'll take you a little bit longer to weave this section in than it would any other. But take your time. This is the inside of your bag and nobody is going to see it. Okay? Not at all. Unless the Easter eggs have eyes. <laughs> well, I always get silly in every tutorial, don't I? Sorry, guys. So just now, you want to finish off with just weaving along where you see a couple of stitches. Just weave it in. Make sure you can't see the needle in the front. And actually, this time, you can a little bit right there. So I'm going to take that last bit out. You don't want to be able to see the needle. Okay? Perfect. All right, and that goes through there. And if you want, you can come back another way, just in different areas. Lexa. Oh, it's not going to let me do it. It's so super thick. And it's going to get even thicker because you're going to put the other three strands through. All right, so I would just go through a little bit, make sure you can't see the needle in the front and it can't. I just go through a little bit there. All right, so just give this guy here a little bit of a cut right now. All right, and what I would like for you to do is to weave in all those other ends exactly the same way you did this one. And then meet me back here and I'll show you what to do about these corners. They're kind of a little bit off, aren't they? And I'll explain that to you in a minute. All right, weave those ends and meet me back here in a moment. Alrighty now guys, that's your little work there. And these are your four sides. Now just quickly, I wanted to show you two things. One, I wanted to show you how many stitches are in between each stitch marker. And two, I also wanted to show you, and I'll show you two first. If you were to grab your bag from the center and give it a squeeze, let me just bring that up, bring it up there. Give it a squeeze like that, all right? Flatten it down and turn it over. Your stitch markers no longer marry up. Now what we're going to do is move our stitch markers to make them marry up. The reason they no longer marry up is when you are working in the round with um, crochet, every time you go into that very next stitch, you're moving a stitch over. You don't see it happening, but it does happen. All right. So let's just first worry about how many stitches we have in between each stitch marker. So there's your stitch marker stitch. Right, right there. You want to count from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now there is 16 between each stitch marker. All right. Bring your work to the side, right? And just fold your work over in the middle, right there. Make sure the top marries up and your bottom marries up, like so. Then look at your stitch markers, okay? You see that right there, okay? What you need to do is bring your stitch markers over a little bit, okay? So, so let's start from this one here. We're gonna bring that forward by two. We're not gonna move that stitch marker yet. We're gonna pop different colored ones in there. So from here, we're gonna go one and pop this in the second stitch marker. Right? Yes. So there's your stitch marker. You're going to count one. And your stitch marker is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And your stitch marker goes in that last stitch, the one after the sixteen. If you wanted to do it the other way, where you're already in that stitch marker, then you just go one and two. All right? As long as you've got your 16 between your orange and your orange. So take this first blue stitch marker out. Turn your orange to the side and count 16 across this way. But what we're going to do is take that first stitch marker out so you know what you're doing. All right. You should know now it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And in your 17th one, you are popping your new colour, which is your orange. All right. Take out your blue stitch marker here and you're going to do exactly the same. All right. So from here, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 
15, 16, and in your next one, you pop your oh, this stitch marker's playing up. Let's grab another one. You pop your stitch marker right there. Now, if you played your cards right, it should be 16 from there to there. Now, this is our little stitch that looks like there's an extra one in there, so be weary of that. And I'm going to count it so you know what I mean by an extra one. We'll start from here. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, remember, there's a weird tight one in right there. Nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then it should all add up. All right, so now when you close your bag up, in the middle, right down the middle, your stitch markers should be right opposite each other. Now I'm hoping that this makes sense, okay? Because when you look at your work, you can see it kind of, it's kind of moved that way. And that's what happens when you're working in the round. This is now going to start getting a little tiny bit tricky. All right. All right. Now we have to work by doing the little pouches in between the sections. We have to work um, doing the rows of the walls and the pouches at the same time, or it's going to be completely difficult for you to understand. All right. So what you really need to start off with, because our work is super solid and thick, Grab yourself a little piece of thread. This is probably too big. You probably could have even had like that much, just, you know, a small handful like that. And what you're going to do is thread that needle that you threaded in the first place, that very first one, the really super thick one, doesn't even have to be super thick. I've already played with it a little bit, so it's a little bit awkward in there, but that's okay. There's our tight center right in there. Now, if you popped in there, when you come back the other way, you cannot pop it through the same section. So you could pop it a little bit further in, a little bit further out, like I just did there. See the center is right there, and I've popped it a little bit further out. Pop your needle in there, and don't pull the whole thread through. Leave some there, just for a minute. Might even leave a bit more just for fun. All right, now see if you can go into the center or close to the center. I just got through the center, so that's all right, and you're there, all right? We're going to tie this in a knot, but you're going to leave a little tiny bit for your hook to go in. So pop your hook there and use your hook as a guide, yes? So you're going to tie it in a knot like that just a good old-fashioned knot yes now just for argument's sake you're going to leave a long tail because you've got to weave this in later but just to make it easier for you just cut it a little bit so that you've got um the ends are not so big because it's going to be very confusing in a minute with all these ends trust me i've done this like five times <laughs> let's try 20 or more but anyway so take your stitch mark i mean stitch marker take your hook out okay by the way you still need stitch markers for this round and for the next round as well okay the way it works now is we're going to count because we've got 16 across this way all right we're going to count seven across so let's go like this not including this stitch here start from your first stitch and say one two three four five six seven in that seventh stitch you're going to place a stitch marker all right yes then you're going to skip one and two place another one so you skip one skip two place another one in your third one so you've got two single crochets um skipped there yeah across here that's including this one you should have seven so one two three four five six seven all right so that's pretty much what i want you to do for each side so go ahead and do that now all right we can do it together it's all right um you don't have to head off on your own not always <laughs> so one two three four five six seven and i didn't put that through the stitch properly which will be an issue later because we need these stitches skip your two one and two i'm sorry 
let's try that again <laughs> one and two pop it in your third one wake up mary <laughs> and it's one two three four five six seven now that's the area with your knot so if you've got one extra just leave that one extra right in the middle there it's a tiny little extra from when we did that knot before all right now i've run out of the blue so i'm going to use a couple of the oranges so you use continue to use the blue okay so from here it's one two three four five six seven we're going to pop our stitch marker in there and skipping one and two jumping into your third one and then going one two three four five six seven the only reason you're counting this seven along here is to make sure it's all even from here we are counting again one two three four five six seven whoops oh, there's a really tight stitch there we'll come from the front well, it really is tight i don't know why but anyway all right and then you go one two and you pop your last stitch marker in your third space and then you go one two three four five six seven and you're good to go what you should have is that blues blues and blues don't worry about mine being orange yours should be a different color so you don't get confused with the corners but you kind of you kind of know the corners you know it's pretty simple the corners all right now this is where the fun begins all right from here there's numerous ways you can do this i'm going to show you one way you see that very first let's get a nice close-up there's your middle stitches right your first two middle stitches there you need to start in that stitch right there but what i want you to do from here just in that stitch there grabbing your needle yes and see these rows right here like that so your needle goes right in there and you go one two three and four and then you grab your little needle needle and you pop it through that post right there yes that is just a marker you can use a stitch marker if you like but i find a needle works better because it goes right around the post okay so now what you're going to do grab your three strands of thread you're not popping it in that first stitch you're going to pop it in the second stitch or the stitch closest to that stitch marker there if that helps closest to your left hand marker all right grabbing your thread pulling a loop through like so and just you know we're going to do a chain just to lock everything in place like that nice tight stitch there turn your work to the side because you're going to work along here now all right so first thing you're going to do is chain five let's bring that up a little and that's one two three four five all right now remember where we put that needle you're going to pop your hook in that needle section right there so you're actually going around the post doing a single crochet right around that post it's a little tricky but that's what we're going to do bit tight bit tricky even i'm struggling to get that hook through there all right so that is what you've done so far all right then bring that out a little bit so you can see what i'm doing now you're going to chain five yet again one two nice and loose three four five because we need to go in these stitches later with single crochets yeah all right so here you're going to do a single crochet in that little knot remember that knot we made earlier you're going to pop your hook in that little knot right there right around it and do a single crochet there just grabbing all the threads out of the way so you can see what you're doing and you are now going to chain five again nice and loose one two three four and five and on this side remember what we did before with the needle you're going to do the same here there's your your end of your row there let me get a nice close up again right there 
and you're going to count four along here so right where that stitch marker is so you're going one two three and four it's one of these stitches right here the hooks in the way obviously right there there's a post right there and that's where you're going into turning your work to the side again because this is the way we're working along there and you're going to go directly into that bring your thread back when you're working through these little bring all your threads back when you're working through the little posts like that so you're going around that post get that needle out the way grab your thread and do your single crochet all right yes chain five one two three whoops two three four and five yes now you're going to slip stitch into your very first stitch there now make sure your thread is at the back of your work like that pull a loop through without losing threads and then pull it through to the loop on your hook a little tricky this part might help to give everything a gentle tug there and there you go all right what I want you to do is just pull that loop up right there grab yourself a stitch marker and pop it through the loop now you need to keep all these stitch markers in place so you know what you're doing this is going to get a little tricky right, that's what you've done so far a little bit weird looks like it's not going to be right but believe me this works okay pass it that way you're now going to work on the opposite direction now the reason we are doing it that way stopping there and then working this way is because when you work on the opposite direction you're going to do your single crochet in that middle single crochet right there and what that's going to do right there is going to keep your pouches sturdy if you don't do that you're going to go up and down up and down up and down and when you're ready to do it you're going to be stuck there so what are you going to do you're going to have to pull slip stitching through very fiddly and it doesn't keep it sturdy this way i find it's more sturdy okay all right when we complete this side we're going to weave this end in because what it's doing at the moment we just want to make sure we're not making any mistakes because once you make a mistake you have to cut all these threads if you make a mistake and you don't want to do that so let's just keep going for now making sure we're not making any mistakes we're going to start on this side and work our way across again so we're going to get another three threads yes it's going to be a tad confusing with these threads but trust me this works now the same way we did this side later when we come back we're going to slip stitch into that stitch there and then single crochet across here and slip stitch into that stitch there all right so we need to do exactly the same here so we're going to start see our left hand is holding the stitch marker that's where you pop your hook in your left hand stitch not the one in your right hand but in your left hand it's kind of like we're working backwards really but we're not we're working inwards all right so we're pulling our loop through like so grabbing your strands forward remember this is another set of three strands not the same very messy isn't it <laughs> chain one just to lock it all into place okay just move your thread a little bit and now you're chaining five one two not too tight three four and five I'm just going to hold it there because I didn't do the pin like we did before you know with our needle there's your middle section you're counting four over and you're counting from there so it's one two three and you're in that fourth one right there or wherever that is there all right so pop your needle there pop your work back in okay you're going this way yes so now we're going to pop our hook in oh, where the needle is <laughs> you might have to take it out to get it in okay and do your single crochet like you would like you did in the other round the other side there you go again a little bit fiddly looks a bit weird but it does for now chain five loosely one two three four five when i say loosely don't make big gaps here all right let's move all threads out the way so you can see what i'm doing there's your stitch right there that is your single crochet so pop your hook in 
do a single crochet. <laughs> it doesn't want to stay for me. So complete your single crochet like so. Yeah, then you're going to chain your five nice and loosely. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, now you're going to go this way. Remember, we're going to get our needle. And this time, our needle is coming from this section right here. See that little gap there? Go down there and then start counting back. So one, two, three, and four. It's going to be one of these ones right here. Okay, but... But we are, remember, we are going this way. So we want to go through there. Let's just pull that through like that. Go around the post if you can get there. <laughs> it's very tight. And do your single crochet. And chain five nice and loosely. One, two, three, four, and five. All right. Then you are going to the opposite direction again. Yes, we're going into that very first stitch on this side. Yes, so just grab your tail, pull it the back there, into that stitch closest to there. Pull a loop through, pull it through to the loop on your hook. Pull up that loop, just leaving it there like so. All right, so what you've done is you've gone across this way and you've gone across this way, yes? So a little bit fiddly, a little bit fiddly. Now, you have to come back the other way. So take out, just bring that little, move these threads out of the way, bring your little stitch marker thread up. Remember that one, the first one we worked on? Take it out, pop it in the thread that we just finished. I know it's a little fiddly, but it's the best way, trust me. Leave it there. Now you're going to work back this way and you're going to go over the single crochet that we just went over, okay? And this is how it all locks into place. All right, now we're going to do single crochets across and I think I've, no, I haven't, good. I was going to say I think I've pulled threads, but I haven't. All right, there we go. All right. From here, we're in that stitch there. We're going to jump into that next stitch with a slip stitch, like so. Pull the loop through, chain one, yeah? Turn the work to the side. And now, these stitches right here, you're gonna pop single crochets across. So your first one is there, one, two, three, four, and five. You should have five single crochets. That cha last chain might be a bit tight, but it is one. You should have five single crochets across, then a single crochet in that stitch right there. Yes, then five single crochets across. But there's one right there. That's a nice tight stitch there. That's one. Two, three, four, and five. Looks a bit big there. And it's only because this needs to go over that way. Okay. From here, you are going to actually put a single crochet in the top of this single crochet row. So do your single crochet in the top of that single crochet that you did without splitting the yarn. Try it again, there. All right, like that. Then you're gonna jump right over all of this and five single crochet across. It's gonna be really tight. Mm, try it again. <laughs> there you go, single crochet one, two, Three, four, very tight now. Watch this one. Right there. There's a tight one in there, but it's there. Make sure you get in all five single crochets. And then you single crochet in that single crochet. 
and then five across again. One, two, three, four, it's very tight there. And there's a the fifth one right there. Like that. Then from here, you are slip stitching into the opposite direction. Oh, it's got to go in the back of you, remember? Your stitch has to go behind you. And your slip stitch goes into there. Like so. Pull up a loop. Did that work? Yeah, pull up the loop. You've done your first row of single crochets across. A little bit tight, a little bit awkward, doesn't matter. Leave it there. Grab your stitch marker on this side. Take it out. Pop it in there and leave it there. Now you've got to work across this way. And notice how we are now going to be single crocheting in there, in the middle section, it's going to start keeping your pouches sturdy this way, all right? So, from here, we're popping a slip stitch into that next stitch. Remember, like we did before, pull the loop through, chain on, turn your work. Single crochet across five. One. Two, three, four, and five. Then we single crochet in that single crochet right there. Five across again. One. Very tight there. Two. Three, four, and whoops, lost the stitch there. And there's that one right there, which is five. Well, that one's relatively loose. Okay, now there's your single crochet. You're going to start feeling this part getting a little bit snug now. The single crochet there, you're doing a single crochet on top of it. Then you're jumping over it straight into your next stitch right there and there is one nice tight one in there with a single crochet one two <gasps> that didn't work <laughs> two Terry me they're all getting tangled now the yarns <laughs> three make sure you untangle your yarns guys <laughs> four and Five. No, that didn't work. Try that there. And five. And single crochet in your single crochet. Single crochet across. Five times. Oh, very tight stitch there. And it's not allowing me to pull my threads through. Let's try it again. There we go. And one, two, three, four, and oh, I get the hook in. Five. From here, we're going to slip stitch into that very last stitch right there like that uh, forgot to pull my thread back like that pull it through and pull it through to the loop on your hook pull up a loop so now this is where we are at the moment and this is where we need to start to build our walls as well as continue on these 
pouches as well. It's a little tricky this part, but I know you can get it, all right? So in the meantime, we're going to have to cast off. I know that sounds weird, but it's true. We have to cast off. So give your work a cut. There, pulling out your threads, pulling your threads, and just giving everything a big cut there, right? Same with the other side, giving your work a cut right there. All right, now we're going to remove all of the white out the way for now. We're going to start on some of our colours. I think we will start with the yellow, all right? So grabbing your yellow, once again, you need three strands. You can start anywhere you like, okay? Now, for some reason, I've taken out my stitch markers here. I have no idea why. Let's just pop them back in. <laughs> don't ask me what I did. I did this earlier on um, in the break, and I don't know why I took them undone, but let's not worry about them, okay? In fact, we might start over here just to be safe, because I don't know what I did there. All right, now, see your stitch markers right here, okay? Just before the stitch marker, pop your hook in, all right? Grabbing your yellow, whatever colour you're using, we're going to use the yellow for now. Bring your yellow over like so. You're going to do chain one or, you know, just a lock into place thing. And then you're going to do a single crochet in that stitch as well all right pass your loop back if you want to crochet over it you can but here we're not going to be able to anyway we probably will for the first one that's probably a good idea take your stitch marker out for now you're going to put that back in in a minute single crochet in the stitch like so now you pop that yellow thread right at the back pop your stitch marker back in that stitch like so. Now, single crochet, so you're skipping over all of this, all of the, the work that we've done here, skip over it and single crochet in the stitch of your stitch marker. You might want to take that out for now. So do your single crochet right there. Just going to bring this out a little bit because it's a little bit too close. No, that's too far. <laughs> Can't win, can we? <laughs> That's better. All right, so what you've done is you've done a single crochet, single crochet, chain two, single crochet. We're going to pop that stitch marker back in there, like so. And away you go. Single crochet, single crochet, all the way until you get to the middle section on the other side. So you're passing your corners. And in fact, you can take out your corner stitch markers, I think. I don't think you need them. And if you did, I can help you with them in the end later anyway. So taking out your corner stitch markers and just single crocheting all the way across until you get to your next set of two stitch markers. Now this part of the bag is super easy and this part of the bag is never going to change. So what you see in the next two rows is going to be the same all the way through the bag, going through the sides of the bag, all right? So there's your stitch marker right there, your first one you've come to. Actually, it's your second one because your first one was over here. All right, so you take out that first one on this side. Single crochet in there. Pop in another stitch marker again. Chaining two. One and two. Let's try that two again. And two. Hopefully you're not splitting the yarn like I am. <laughs> now we're going to skip over all of this and we're going to single crochet in our stitch marker stitch. So take that stitch marker out. You can pop your stitch in there first if you're a bit worried about missing it. And there's your single crochet. Pop your stitch marker back in there. And single crochet all the way 
across to the next two stitch markers. Very easy part of the tutorial. But we've got to do the pouches and the walls two rows at a time. You can take out this corner stitch marker, you don't need that anymore. And away you go. And the reason we're doing them two at the same time is because the other way is going to be awkward for us to do. Once the walls are up, it's going to be awkward to do the pouches. And once the pouch is up, it's going to be awkward to do the walls. Plus, you need the walls for the pouches to be attached. It's really awkward, <laughs> but it works. You know, I've done it quite a few times this week. There's your stitch marker. You're doing a single crochet in that stitch marker. Like so. It's a beautiful yellow, isn't it? It's really strong. Pop your stitch marker back in. Might have paid to have used a lighter yellow, but that's okay. Now you've got a whole lot of threads here. Just move them out the way for now. You're chaining two like normal. One and two. Take that stitch marker out and you're going to pop your next stitch in there like that. And stitch marker back in there. You probably don't need the stitch markers anymore, but let's just keep them in for two more rounds. And then later, if you find you're confident, you may not have to use them at all. Okay. But for now, we'll keep them there. Single crochet all the way to your next two stitch markers. We're going to get rid of that corner stitch marker in a minute. The corners aren't going to change anymore. It's just going to grow all the way to the top. Okay, so take out that corner stitch marker. As long as you've got your two on either sides of your bag, the rest is super duper easy. Both sides, not either sides. I'm sorry, let's try all four sides. <laughs> Wake up, Mary. There you go. Nearly there, and there's the stitch marker. All right, you're going to take your stitch marker out, do your single crochet, chain one and two. Whoops, I forgot to put the stitch marker back in there. That's where it goes. Oh my gosh, I'm loving this yellow. Wow. <laughs> single crochet in your next stitch marker. So you're skipping over that, that work we just did. Whoops. Now don't forget to put that stitch marker back in, right there, and single crochet all the way across. We're going to take that corner stitch marker out in a minute. I think that's the last corner stitch marker we had in there. We don't need it there anymore because we've already got our side markers in. Okay. Take that out, and away we go. All right, in one more. There you go. And now we slip stitch into the top. I forgot to put a stitch marker in that first one. But that's the stitch that you're slip stitching into. It's just before your stitch marker. And you're going to slip stitch into the top of that one right there. Chain one. Now give that chain one a really good tug. And in the same chain, you're going to pop another single crochet. Or a single crochet, I should say. One. I'm going to pop an orange stitch marker just so that we can find it at the end of the row. I think we can. But just in case, you know. All right. And in that stitch marker, you're going to pop another single crochet. Like so. And then here. Wait a minute. We better put that stitch marker back in first. And then here, you're going to chain two yet again. One and two. Don't make them too tight. Yeah. And then you're going to single crochet in that stitch marker. So you've skipped over your chain two from the previous round. 
like so. Pop the stitch marker back in. And you guessed it, single crochet all the way around the row. Okay, now you're just repeating this row. So it's super duper easy. I'm going to go as fast as I can until I get to that next set of stitch markers. So that way we can just all work together and not worry about having to watch me crochet. <laughs> just go really, really fast without, you know, slipping stitches like I just did. <laughs> you didn't see that, did you? Well, you probably didn't. I might have been out of frame. <laughs> all right, here we go. We're here at the next set of stitch markers. All right. Oh, gosh, I'm doing well. There. Okay. Now there's your stitch marker. What are you going to do? You're going to pop your hook in the stitch marker stitch. Take that stitch marker out. Pull it through. Do your normal single crochet. Stitch marker back in. And you know how you've got your chain two there? You're still going to do chain two. Don't do them too tight. One and two. And then single crochet into the stitch marker. So you're skipping those chains. Single crochet in that stitch marker. Like so. And you guessed it. First pop a stitch marker back in there. Single crochet all the way across. Okay. All right, I don't think I need to show you the rest of this part. All you need to do is single crochet until you get to your stitch marker. Single crochet, chain two, skip these two. Make sure they're loose, the chains that you do. Single crochet in the stitch marker and so on until you get to the next section. When you get to this stitch marker, the orange one right before your like, very first set that you did, wait for me there. All right, so go ahead and continue that. Get to there and I shall meet you up. Alrighty, here we are at the end of the row. I have one last single crochet to go and I'm going to pull my work through like so. We're going to cast off here and you're thinking, what? Yes, we are. But we're not going to do it like I usually do where I slip stitch and then cast off. We're going to do that, that join we did when we first came back, the, the very first join we did when we started this part of our tutorial. So just lift your thread a little bit. Give your work a cut, like so, pull that loose through. Now you're saying it's not finished. No, it's not. So what we're going to do is we're going to remember that really thick needle that we used, like so. And that is just, oh, we can get rid of that stitch marker now because actually this is a stitch marker that we would have slip stitched into to join. All right. So we're going to take it out. We're going to use that, sp that space though to join it still. But we're going to go through the back of the loops like we did before with the white earlier in the tutorial i think i've got too much thread here let's bring that out a bit okay so there you go we're going to give it a tug like that yes we're going to go back into that stitch again but not into the front just through the back way for a minute like so just for a minute then we're going back into the stitch like so and back through the loop there now after you've done this stitch you need to make sure you've got the right amount of stitches between here and here and that's actually 16 remember but you can do that later for now if you wanted to weave this in using this needle you can i find it super duper thick i'll just pop it through um the bottom section and weave it in later all right <sighs> There we go and i'll weave that in later when i get a chance all right but for now just pop a stitch marker back in there like so and you you can start from there later but you know what yours truly is going to start from another area because you guys know what i'm like all right so what you have is that you have a whole lot of threads everywhere which you're going to have to weave in eventually anyways but for now we're going to work on the yellow part of the in the pouches with a tad difference 
So these last two rows that you did, the two yellow rows, they're the same two rows you're going to do all the way through. Now these next two rows, they're the same two rows that you go, are going to do together. Now grab your hook. You're going to be popping your hook into these two chains again, but just in that first one on your left hand side, remember, that's how we start our rows. So pop your little loops there. This is your three strands, remember? We're still working with three strands. Chain, just to lock it all into place. All right, now here, this is a little tricky. This is a lot of threads and there's a lot of stitch markers. But right here, there is the first stitch you've got to go into. So all you're doing is a single crochet without splitting the yarn in that first stitch, like that. All right, yes, single in the next, single in your next. Super easy now, isn't it? Single in your next. Still a little bit complicated when it gets to the middle. Single in your next, all the way across your piece until you get to your middle section. Single. Oops. Single. And single. Okay. All right. There's one more stitch right there. You can see it. I haven't been counting, but there is actually one stitch. You can see it before you get to the, the middle section. Now, the middle section, you know that you're going the right way because this side is over the last bit. So you want to do a single in the middle section of that right there. And then you want to jump straight into that stitch there and keep going across with your singles so it's a little easier not completely <laughs> but a little bit yes all right nearly there nearly there one more I guess one more after this which is right there you can see it all right, there. Now, here's the opposite side. Remember we came through that first section there. When we come back, we're gonna be in here. So you really need to go into the first one on the opposite side, which is grabbing your thread at the back. And you are slip stitching into that very first chain. Mine's fairly tight. Oh dear, we're in trouble now. <laughs> <Whoops. laughs> all right so we're slip stitching into there now that didn't work either ah there we go now we're in slip stitching into there slip stitching into uh actually know what we leave that don't we yes we do we leave it we pop a little stitch marker in there And there you go all right now we have to start on this side but not just on this side we have to make sure we're going down the right side now if you look carefully at this side see how those V's are facing you you need to work on the opposite side of the V's facing you so your V's need to be facing that way so in other words just work right in this corner here where you've left off all right right there Alrighty, now remember what we did before? We popped our hook in the stitch to the one closest to our hand. Alright, that's the chain stitch that we did earlier. One of the chain stitches we did earlier. Pull our loop through, pop the tails over. Alright, just do one to lock into place and give it a tug. Alright, now here we are. And all we're doing is single crocheting in our very first stitch we come to. One. And then all the way across two and so on and so on. Okay, so this part of it is easy because all we're doing is single crocheting in the same stitches that we were in before. So you know what you're doing in this section. It's only when you get to the middle section that it can be a bit tricky. And remembering to stop on one side 
and go to the other side of your work and work stop on one side and work on the other side if you know what I mean because you're doing one row at a time on top of each other when it comes to the pouches okay so here we are now right there is the top of the single crochet in the previous round you're doing one on top of that and then you're jumping right over into the white and you're doing your yellow across there oops there we go pop that there all right almost there almost okay one more which is right there okay now remember what we do here whoops we go into the very first one on this side the opposite side with a slip stitch hold it there pull up your loop take your loop out of your other side wherever that is i think it is take your stitch marker mean not your loop get it right baby <laughs> come on woman take your stitch marker and pop it in your side that you just finished go back to the side see we're getting faster at this now aren't we okay we're getting very good very fast at it all right, now we're going to slip stitch into the chain next to it, like so. Chain one, turn. And just single crochet across. Don't go into that one there. Just jump straight into that one right there. All right? Because that wasn't really a single crochet. It was more like a slip stitch into your corner there. If that's what you want to call it, it's not really called a corner, is it? It's called a side. All right. I think you know pretty much what you're doing here. And what I'm going to do for the rest of this tutorial, once I get across this row, I'm going to show you what number to go to and show you different colors that you can use to finish off this part of your bag. You're thinking, what? What are you talking about? You haven't showed us anything. <laughs> You'll know what I mean in a minute. <laughs> oh. There. Sorry about the uh, the lighting, guys, because I'm doing the afternoon work on purpose to get this ready for you guys. So jump into your over stitch, if that's what you want to call it. I don't know what to call it, an over single crochet. <laughs> and just jump straight into your next single crochet there super easy well this part is anyway all right nearly there I'm trying to go as fast as I can to show you that last bit so you can head off on your own and do it All right, there we are. So far, this is what you've got for your pouches. They're almost looking like pouches, aren't they? <laughs> well, not yet. We've <laughs> got a long way to go. <laughs> well, not that much, not really. All right, remember that one chain? Just bring your work at the, ch at the back there. And we're going to slip stitch into that very last chain. Oh, I hope it's not as tight as mine. Okay, grab your thread, bring your work through like so it is awkward this one it really is and pull it through the loop on your hook pull up a loop and with this one here you're going to cast off because that's the end of your yellow all right for this side you still got to finish off this one here so go back to your other yellow that you were doing where is that that's here and you're going to finish this side Yes, I hope it's making sense. <laughs> okay, just stretching everything out. 
like so. All right, so now you are slip stitching into the next chain like so. You know this part, chain one, turn your work. And away we go with our single crochets. There. One. Oh, you don't need to count. Well, you could if you wanted to, but you don't really. Just keep going in every single crochet all the way across. Now, this is your final side for the yellow. And then we're going to change colours yet again. Four. All right, there we go. We go into the last stitch there, and then we go through the top stitch there with a single crochet ah, without losing stitches, and then we jump straight into that very first stitch from this side. Oh, it's not really the first stitch, it's the middle one, isn't it? And you might find this really thick, yeah? Very thick and it's very sore on my hands. I hope it's not as sore on your hands <laughs> as it is on mine. Okay, and we're nearly done for this side. Nearly done for this side. All right, I'm almost there. I think I've got one more stitch to go. There you go. All right, from here, remember what we do? We just pop into, well, we're gonna put the yarn over there, remember? We're gonna pass it at the back. Make sure you put it at the back, otherwise you will be, um, you will have too many threads on your hook and you won't know what's going on. You'll think you've got a half double happening. Nice tight chains. Make sure the next round I'll do them loose. <laughs> oh, see how hard that is to get through. All right, pull it through. Do yourself a chain. Like so. Now you're probably thinking, oh gosh, is that it? <laughs> it's kind of it. It's not done yet. Look at all the gazillion ends. <laughs> all right, I'm going to start you off with your next round. And your next round will be the orange. Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to take you back. Um, I'm going to pop a time up on the top there in a minute as to where you need to go to repeat exactly what you've done here. But firstly, I'm going to start you off with your orange, okay? Um, and you can start anywhere you like. This is where we started last time. Remember I have the stitch marker there? I'm gonna start in another section. So I'm gonna take, you don't have to, that's just me being pedantic, all right? So I'm gonna take that stitch marker out. You can start there if you like. I'm just going to start in any stitch before a stitch marker, like so. All right, and right now I'm popping the time up as to where uh, we first started doing this part. So what we did before was we started here, we did two rounds of the yellow, then we stopped and we did these two. Remember, and this is how I'll start you off. And then you can head off on your own and repeat the yellow for as many times as I tell you in a minute. But in the meantime, let's start. Pull the loop through, single crochet, in the same stitch as your chain just giving everything a bit of a tug there you can crochet over that tail if you want one more time because we are doing a single crochet in that next stitch which is right there single crochet right there all right and pop that 
thread at the back now pop your stitch marker in that first stitch now remember guys do these chains a little loose oh not these ones these ones are okay you can leave these as normal one and two because we're not going into these ones we're going into the second one but we're going to jump over all of this hop into our stitch where the stitch marker is and do the single crochet there all right I'm not going to show you anymore because the Sun is a little bit unbearable at the moment <laughs> as you can see what you're going to do now is see these two yellow rows we did here and the two yellow rows we did here you're going to do that in the orange two orange rows here two orange rows here two green rows two green rows two purple rows, two purple rows, and two pink rows, and two pink rows. So it goes like this. Orange, green, purple, pink. Meet me back here Wednesday morning or possibly Thursday morning, and I will show you how to finish off your bag. All right, so go ahead and do two orange, two green, two purple, two pink, and I'll meet you back here to finish off the bag in a few days time thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like subscribe and share and do all those wonderful things that you guys already do for me i've popped the time up there right now go ahead complete your bag for as high as you can then meet me back here in a few days time and i'll show you how to finish off your bag thank you so much for watching and ciao for now